I've had a few messages from a couple of people wanting to know a bit more about FL Studio and stuff. Uh, one person didn't know how to add a baseline. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the basics of what you need to know in order to get started in FL Studio. So stick around and hopefully learn something. We also have Pancake in the room. She's not gonna be on camera except for right now. Pancake, pancake. Pancake, 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 pancake. Oh, now you look. As you can see, I have two screens right here and that is the reason for the layout of FL Studio. And this right here is how FL Studio is laid out on my screen. So I've got the mixer right there and I've got the playlist and then I've got the main window right there. So that is how I lay out FL Studio. And this right here is how I was gonna do the video, but uh, with the GoPro attached to me, it's kind of difficult to zoom in on the screens. The quality is really bad. So I decided to reconfigure my screen recorder. So now I can go from one screen to the other without having to worry about editing anything afterwards. All right, so first thing, we've got a menu here. So if you're thinking of putting a track together, maybe check out these sounds here. I think these come with FL Studio. I've never really used them, but they're here if you want them. So we're gonna need a kick. This is how I usually add the sounds to where I want them, just drag them on. So I think I'll use that snare. Probably use that one, put that underneath. Hats. Might just use that one. All right, now we've got our sounds. We've only got three of them for now. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add these to the mixer. So what you can do is just click on this and drag it up. That'll take it to whichever mixer track you want it on. Or what you can do is click on this and then click on track and that'll do it automatically. It'll take it to the next empty one. Or if you like colors, what you can do is right click and change color. Choose a color, boom. There's another way to do that as well. If you've got a wheel on your mouse, click it. Now I'm gonna set a tempo of, I don't know, maybe 110. And uh, I'll just put anything in this. And press space. And nothing is playing. Why is that? Well, that's because this right here is on song. And when it's on song, this here is what is playing. This is the playlist. So when I press the space bar, you can see this is going on. But if you wanna play this, you're gonna click on this. PAT, pattern, because this is where you make your patterns. You can do multiple things on one pattern, or you can separate the patterns, and you can also name them the same way you can name these. So if you wanna name them, right click, rename color and icon, that pops up and you can rename it or click the wheel mouse. And it's the same thing, just a little quicker to get to. And you can do the same for the pattern. K-I-K, kick, color it if you want. I'll go to the next one, name this one, snare, color it that. Next one, uh, what was this? Hat. Right, so now what you can do, go over to the playlist. On my mouse, I've got two other buttons on the side. I've got forward and back button. So if I press the back button, this comes up. And if I press the forward button, this comes up. Uh, I usually just use this, and then I choose which pattern I want. Never really use this one, but uh, yeah, if you want your kicks, click on that, put your kick there. If you want your snare, click on that, put that there. So the way I zoomed into that just then was I pressed control and dragged the right mouse button. So if I wanna zoom in on that, I press control, right mouse button and drag to where I want the screen to zoom to. Or if I wanna zoom into that area without even doing that, what I can do is press control and click the right mouse button and it does it automatically. It will basically zoom into whatever area is in use. So if I put these there like that, 
and then I click that again, it's going to zoom into that quite handy. But anyway, we've got our kicks. What we need now is a snares. So I'm going to go to pattern two, which is snare. Then I'm going to put the snares in and then the hats every two. Sometimes doing this is a little annoying. So what you want to do is fill each two steps and boom. So now we go over to here and I'll press play. Oh no, what's happening? Pattern. Click on song or click on that and that selects song automatically. And there you have the beginning of a track. So I've lowered the hats and I brought the snare down a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of a bass line. Somebody was stuck on how to add a bass line. So this right here can be bass. And I'm going to color that. I'm going to color it. Let's make it orange. So you can either press plus and that'll bring up the list of synths you have installed. Or you can right click any one of these and hover over insert. Or you can press the forward button on your mouse if you have one of those over this area. So what I'm going to insert is something called Citrus, which comes with FL Studio, which is what I've done here. So I'm going to send this to mixer track number 10. So Citrus has a bunch of presets. We want bass. I don't usually use Citrus, but I'm going to use it this time. And sub bass seems to sound like the right thing. And this is where it sounds like. So now there you have your bass. And now to put the bass in, you can't use these because that's going to be weird. And this is what it would sound like if you did use these. So what you want to do is right click and go to piano roll. That brings this up. So I'm going to put this empty pattern over to here. Here we have the bass and it's orange. Whatever we put in this is going to show up over there automatically. So what I want to do now, if you have more than one monitor and you want to drag this out of the screen, as you can see, nothing's happening. And when I take this over to there like that and go to the other screen, it's not showing up. So what you've got to do is go over to here and detach it. And now it shows in front of the menu and across to the other screen. So if I go like this, it shows up there. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back, undetach it and go back over to here, click on this. And there you have your bass line. Okay, so now we're going to sort of expand on this a little bit. All right, so what I did then, I do these things just automatically and don't even think about them. I pressed control, left clicked to select, and then pressed shift, kept all the shift and dragged that across. So let's say if you want to select these, and then you want to select this, these are unselected. You still got your finger on control, but it's unselecting. So what you got to do, control, select what you want, and then press down shift as well as control, and then select this. Then what you can do is let go of control, keeping hold of shift, drag that across. Keyboard shortcuts are amazing. Let's say you want to duplicate these right here. What you do, control and B. That does that. What you can do is right click this back to whatever you want to duplicate. So now these are selected and if you press control and B, that'll just double them. Convenient. Right, well anyway, let's get back to what I was doing. Now there's more than one way to do anything in FL Studio. Usually there's more than like, there's more than two ways, more than three ways to do stuff. Any way you want to do it, so long as it gives you the result you're after, it's not the wrong way to do it. All right, so we want to automate the volume of the hats. I usually try not to use this. 
I usually save them for right at the end, but in this instance, I'm going to show you this first. So select, drag back and right click that, create automation clip, boom, that goes there. And then what I'll do is I'll take the volume up to where I'd like it, which is probably going to be about there. Zoom in a bit. If I was to do this, the volume would only go to there. It would discount that. It's a bit loud. Take it down a bit. And then what I'll do what I'm doing here, I think some of these things you might have to enable in the menu. So what I've got here are the general settings. So if some of these shortcuts don't work with your mouse, then what you want to do is enable this one. Click and hold for special gesture functions. And for the rest of them, I'm not too sure what I've enabled. I've, I've had these settings done for quite some time. Compare with yours and uh, do whatever you like or whatever works for your computer because uh, not all these settings will work for all computers. So the click and hold, so what I want to do here is right there, I want to cut these like this. The other way you can do this is by clicking and holding the right mouse button and try not to move it when you click. That'll bring this up and that'll cut that and then you can get rid of these. Comes in quite handy now and then. And on this, I'm not too sure if I mentioned it, but you can right click and that brings up new points. If you left click, it doesn't do anything. But what you can left click to do is drag the ones that are already there up or down or side to side. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clone this. This is Citrus. So I'm going to clone that, move it to mixer track number 11, and I'm going to choose a different preset. Bite size. Okay, so back over to this. On the mouse, I'm going to press my back button. That's going to bring this up. I can add a new pattern by clicking on this and putting it there. Or go back over to this screen and just simply press plus. That's a new pattern. And you can name it. Hit escape if you don't want to name it. Or what you can do is simply right click this and find next empty, no naming. Automatically goes to pattern five. I'm just going to loop this area. Right, so there we have our number one smash hit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to automate the hats again. But this time it's not going to be the volume, it's going to be panning. And this right here is the left and right panning. That area is what is going to be automated. So I'm going to right click and automate, right click, copy value. So if I make a new one right here, and if it accidentally goes slightly up, I can paste that value right there. Usually you're lucky and it'll stay at 50, but sometimes when you click it, you might go slightly up or down. That is when it's needed. So right here is where the hats begin. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to go to the middle of it up and then down. That should be good enough. Now, should we make it a little more extreme? Okay, good idea. That is a little laborious, but what you can do, click your right mouse button, keep hold of it. Do that. Shorten that, and we want to take this and do a bit of this. What you can do is drag these up or down, 
and on the ones that you've copied, it will do it automatically. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is automate an EQ on this. And the way I'm gonna do that is by clicking on this on the mixer and then choosing parametric EQ2 from the effects list. And here we have it. I'm gonna solo this. So I'm gonna right click on that. That mutes everything else. And then I'm gonna add a low pass to that. Uh, I can make it steep. And if you use the wheel on your mouse, you can change the Q. So I'm gonna make it start off like this and then slowly open up. Like that. And as I'm moving this, you can see that this right here moving. So that is what is gonna be automated. I think we can start off around there. So what I'll do is right click and create automation clip. Just basically drag that to the top. We can add a bit of a curve like this. It's fairly straightforward, isn't it? Okay, now what I'm gonna do is add a bunch of claps, I think. Let's have a look. Are there any claps? Not sure. All right, so what I'll do is I'll add this to uh, here and put that on four. And I will name that snare two. Bring the volume down on it a little bit. And we'll put a new pattern here somewhere. Make it pattern six, snare two. Go over to here, just put it down here. And uh, that and uh, that. And if you press shift and use the mouse wheel, you can bring it down. And I might bring these down to the bottom. All right, so that's cool. Duplicate these right to the end. You see, that already sounds better than just what it was. When you first start with FL Studio, your music's gonna sound pretty poo, but you'll get better with time. Just wanted to point that out. So don't worry about it. What I'm gonna do now is add a reverb to that snare too. So I'm gonna solo snare two, and I'm gonna send that to this over here. So all these sounds, they all get sent. If you've got these sends on, then these sounds get sent to these. Choose the sound that you want to go to there and turn up the volume for it. So now this is gonna be going to there. All I've got to do on this is add a reverb to it. So right here we have the reverb on this. And if I turn up the volume for it, you can hear it. So that is how you add reverb to your instruments or to whatever track you want them on. You could put the reverb straight to the track that the instruments are on, the sounds are on, but that will end up changing a couple of things and you should know what you're doing really, but you're a beginner, so we're not gonna get into that just yet. Uh, might do in the future, might not. Now, let's just send that to the reverb too. RV for reverb.
Now this isn't actually going to be a track, this is just me messing around so I can show you what to do. I could make a track, but I'm not going to because that requires a little more effort. And uh, right now I just want to be effortless or uh, lazy. Alright, so what I do is I'll take that, put that in there, CYMB, and we'll put that there. So now, I'll put that on five. When I do this, we have the symbol. But now, what if you want some sort of a sweep type sound right before this symbol? Let's choose that one. Instead of putting it in there, I'm going to drag it across to the playlist. And what I've done is I've just dropped it here. So that shows up like this. So now what you want to do, double click it. This pops up. I'm going to take it to track six. So this is how it's going to sound. I'm going to bring the volume down on it because it's going to be a bit loud. So I'm going to double click it. Then what I can do is reverse it. Then I can place this. Now, how do you get that to go against this line right there? Well, you keep hold of Alt and when you drag it, you can put it exactly where you want it. And the same goes for this. And now we've got this. Pretty good. Okay, so that's pretty much straightforward. And if you want to export this, just go to File, Export, and choose WAVE or MP3 or whatever format you'd like. This should really get you going as a beginner. Not too sure if I missed anything, probably have. Also, I can't stress this enough. If you use software, whether it's Windows, video editing software, photo editing software, audio editing, become familiar with it, become familiar with the menus, become familiar with the shortcuts, that will get you where you want to be faster. Anyway, keep practicing if you're making music and I will see you in the next one.